because of truly dedicated, innovative science. Within a few years, we figured out that it was due to the virus, the HIV virus. Then took a few years to actually figure out how we test for that virus. Then we had, a few years later, the ability to actually quantitate how much virus was in a person's blood. And during all this time, truly innovative research into how the virus replicates and how the immune system responds to the virus allowed companies to develop what we call antiretroviral drugs or medications to slow down the spread. So the first drug approved for HIV was in 1987, which was AZT, which is at that time the fastest drug ever approved by the FDA and started the fast track mechanism through the FDA. Then several other drugs within that same class were approved in the early 1990s. So you then had not one, but you had two pills you could combine. And then in late 1995, very early 1996, the first HIV protease inhibitors were approved. So you could finally put three pills together from two different classes and completely suppress the HIV replication. In the last 20 years, we've gone from people taking multiple medicines with lots of side effects to the majority of my patients with HIV now take a single pill a day. That's a combination of medicines co-formulated, one pill a day that's extremely well tolerated and completely suppresses their virus. Now we know it does not eliminate the virus. If they were to stop taking that medicine, the virus would come back. But we now have a handful of people in the world who have been what we called functionally cured of HIV meaning they've gone through some research protocols that eliminates the reservoir of HIV in their body. The new drugs are so effective in people who are well suppressed, you may only need two of the medications to maintain HIV treatment and control and looking at ways to deliver the medications differently, such as a shot that lasts several months or maybe someday even implantable so you don't have to take the pill every day and that's where the HIV therapy is moving now. So the reason why it is so, so difficult to cure HIV is that once HIV infects a person's body, it integrates into the host genome in several of their cells, and those cells go hide in any of the lymphoid tissue. So in the lymph nodes, the liver, the spleen, and they lay there what we call latent, or hiding, as long as the person is on HIV therapy. So any time a virus does leave a cell, it gets taken care of by the HIV therapy, but if you stop the HIV therapy, that latent virus will come back. So in order to cure HIV, you have to eliminate those hiding virus in the cells or that latent viral reservoir, which is the term. So there are many different ways you can approach eliminating the reservoir. One of the more popular ways that's being investigated is something called, and there are many different terms for it, but prime shocking kill or kicking kill, which is essentially giving medications that first wake the virus up and then finding ways to make the cells that have the virus susceptible to dying. So when the virus is awake, it kills itself, mm -hmm. but does not kill any other cells in the body. So essentially specifically targets the HIV infected cells and eliminates them without hurting anything else. And the science is exciting. It's getting closer and closer. And if you can do that with medications rather than fancy therapies like gene therapy or bone marrow transplant, then it's scalable to large parts of the world and you can actually touch millions of people that way. So that's where the area of research is on how to make those hiding cells wake up, how to make them sensitive to die, and how to target just the HIV-infected cells. Unfortunately, HIV has been a very, very hard vaccine to develop. In the world of viruses, vaccines fall into one of three buckets. They fall into the bucket where they respond to antibodies, and the vaccine, the virus responds to developing antibodies, and the vaccines are outstanding. And in the viral worlds, that includes polio, mumps, SARS-CoV-2, we got very lucky, it was in that category. Then we have the second category, which is like the influenza vaccine. That it responds okay, it's about 60% effective. It certainly saves lives, it makes the difference, but it's not perfect. And then we have the third bucket, which quite frankly is the vast majority of viruses that infect humans. And that's HSV, CMV, EBV, 
HCV, and HIV is in that category. We're simply forming an antibody to the virus is not adequate to prevent infection. You have to do very sophisticated engineering to induce T cell effects as well as innate effects, antibody effects, and even then sometimes it's very hard to decide what is the part of the virus you target. And after decades and billions of dollars of research, we're still not there for HIV. There have been many, many approaches to how to do this many different scientific delivery mechanisms, many different areas of the viruses targeted, many different parts of the immune system targeted, and so far none of them have been effective at preventing HIV from getting infected. We still need to slow the number of people who are getting infected down through good public health measures and good education so that we stop the HIV epidemic. We still need to get more people who are infected on therapy. We know we can do it with public health measures, but we also need to find out more about how we eliminate that reservoir and get people cured of the virus in a way that's simple and effective and we can cure more people. And the last major hurdle we have is to develop an effective vaccine. We still don't have a vaccine that can prevent infection, a preventive vaccine, or a therapeutic vaccine where you give it to people who already have the virus that can help them fight the infection. A huge amount of research has happened, but we're still not there yet.